All right. I don't see anything yet. I'm, all, I'm like all giddy right now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I got to wait for it to pop up because it still says that um, we're, um, I'm hosting somebody or something like that. So I'm like all giddy about it. So this is this is the first. Oh, look at you, all fancy! I see it now. I see it. It's in there. It's so pretty. I love it. I love it. Okay. All right. All right. We'll talk. We'll talk. We'll talk. I love it though. I love it though. All right. So we're good. Everything's straight. Uh, yeah. All right, so so we can start. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of the show. Video, episode four hundred and eighty-four of the show. I'm your host, Andrew. Hey, I'm Danny. And this is your source for tech, gaming, and entertainment news. Head over to theshowradio.info. Once again, it's theshowradio.info, and check out our past shows. While you're there, subscribe and tell a friend about the show. Daniela, we're this is four hundred and eighty-four. Like, what's up? I'm cold. <laughs> Okay, so no, I'm you said excited. Cold front. I, I, for some reason, like I was like 490. No, we're not there. That we're so close to 500. We're close. close. We're close. So it's so uh, four, it's 484. Uh, 483 was last week. So if you guys didn't get a chance to check that out or listen to that, definitely check that out. Uh, that was done, um, audio only, uh, because uh, of some challenges that I was having, but uh, we figured out some things. We figured out some things, and and I think this will be a good ride uh, for a while in terms of uh, the way we're setting up the show. Uh, we got uh, a new layout, thanks to Daniela. It's looking amazing, so I'm really feeling that. Um, so, yeah, so so what's up? Talk to me. What's up with you? Um, we had a cold front coming in, so it's, like, abnormally really cold. Okay. So, like, I think uh, the article said that it was pretty much dipping into the 40s. So I've kind of been bundled okay. up and, and huddled up in, at home. <laughs> okay, so, so that, 40s, uh, yeah. 40s, I consider that warm. Yeah, well, we're in Hawaii, so that's cold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our, our cold is in the 60s. Right. So go 20 below that, that's, that's pretty cold for us. Um, okay, fair enough. That, you know, playing playing some new games. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely, definitely. So, uh, okay, so I was trying to play Titanfall uh, two maybe yesterday or the day before on stream, and the file got corrupted for whatever reason, so I had to reinstall it. So I'm probably gonna try to check that out later on tonight. Uh, but you've been all the way in checking out Resident Evil two, and I'm scared. So I think uh, do we want to show? Okay, so before we jump right into the Resident Evil stuff, which I know you have a lot to say about, I'm definitely going to give you um, the the floor for that. Uh, the new lighting kit, you know, I got working, right? Yeah, I see that. I, I'm I'm all I'm all jazzed up right now. So so that's that. I'll put a link in the show notes for that. Um, so we'll jump into uh, Resident Evil Two. So what's up with that? Because I don't even playing a lot of that. Um. Okay, so really, really short story about this. Before okay. I even started, I originally wasn't going to play it. And it's not because I didn't like the series. It was more because it had some weird, deeper value and history behind it that kind of made me a little bit sad. Because when okay. I played the first when I played the first Resident Evil uh, 2, actually 1, 2, and 3, um, it wasn't until I moved here and I was living with my dad. And before that, I didn't see my dad for like eight, nine years. Okay. And so that was like our bonding thing, because this is one thing that we found out shortly after I moved here to live with him, that we had a common thing in video games. So we played Resident Evil, and he played through the game so many times. My dad is like this, kind of was like a backseat gamer in a way, but I liked it. It was like a bonding time with my dad, and he had all all of them memorized, especially two. Two was his favorite. But he had like the like, dialogue or, or well, he had the, the dialogue, stages. he had the stages, he knew what to expect in every hallway, every room at any moment. He knew exactly what to expect. He like had it all memorized so that wow. when I was playing it, he pretty much told me, he's like, OK, you know, you're going here, you're going to take out your shotgun, you're going to see like five different zombies, three are going to be on your right, two is going to be on your left. 
so you and your right is close is closest but they're the slowest the two on the right is the farthest but they're the fastest and they'll get to you first so you're gonna take them out first and then you're gonna take out those three he he was like all about that and that's he, crazy man he literally walked me through the game which in a way kind of ruined it for me because i didn't have that discovery thing i just had my dad who's pretty much my strategy guy <laughs> right, right um so i had some weird feelings about wanting to play this one because I wasn't going to be playing with my dad. I don't really have a relationship right. with my dad anymore so that I could just call him up and be like, hey, did you play it? What do you think? Um, I had some right, really right. weird mixed feelings about it. So I did. I, I ended up buying it um, on Steam for the very last the very last moment. And man. Okay, is... so you're playing on PC. I am. I am playing it on PC. Okay. Okay. And uh, it is intense. It is... I don't know if it's just more intense than what two was because there was like a few things even with my dad telling me things there would be certain jump scare moments i guess you could say or uh, intense moments where he wouldn't tell me that was exactly coming up right so i still got scared but there wasn't like in in this this remake there were so like the first the first night i played it it was just release night um i was shaking like i was so nervous and so scared and it wasn't necessarily Wait, the zombies part? that were scaring yeah. me it right. was it was just like there was such, such intense moments of like oh my god and since i have like you know these these a40s and just listening to the direction and the area and like all of these noise that were going on Oh my goodness. I was just like hmm. so so nervous to turn the corner or I was I was okay. just kind of panicking. So so these are definitely impressions right sure. So how much of the game is different from what you remember and how much of it is the same? What's um, up, bro? Um well, the police station and you know the 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 center main lobby for the police station it's it I feel it's the same as what I remember it to be. Um, there are certain things that changed um, as far as the puzzle elements. Definitely, you know what's really weird is definitely how you go through the doors. So Resident Evil is known for that. They use the doors at that, as that loading screen. So you just have this black screen with the door and it slowly creaks open. That's a, that's a huge difference that I kind of like almost miss in a way. Right. That's one of those prime things that I remember about Resident Evil. Um, even though that's something so small. Okay, um, okay. There's definitely a lot more character models for these zombies. And okay, so they I have are... a question right there. Did they did they mocap the the character the you know, like how did they do uh the characters? Because they look so much more like alive, right? Uh human. Yeah. Not the I, zombies, I don't I can't I can't humans. Yeah, I, I believe they did. I believe they're they're okay. definitely motion captured off of the the characters that are voicing them, um, quite okay. quite a bit. Um, actually, I have to go and double check and fact check myself on that one. But they they it looks so good though, man. Like it it really does. And um, I was talking with my boyfriend about uh, Claire, is that he didn't like how her face looked a little bit bubbly or puffy in the cheeks, and. I actually liked it because I believe she's supposed to be 19 years old. She's looking for her brother, Chris, and she's supposed to be around 19 years old. So she still has that, that baby face, that baby fat to her that gives her that youthful look. So right. it makes sense to me for her face to kind of have like some childlike innocence, like slowly coming into that womanhood thing. Like she's not fully womanly like Ada is. Ada is like amazing. And so like, uh, so incredibly badass like i think they they did her justice and she is so much better from like the original um even down to the outfit that she was wearing like she and she does definitely looks you know asian ada right, wong right. so right. Ada wong <laughs> right i i i really super enjoyed that um it's model model is probably cheaper than animating the characters oh mocap mostly <laughs> mocap um <sighs> And and the voice acting is 
so so incredible it draws you in like there when you uh i think it's really good it yeah is. it is yeah um I, di I didn't finish the game yet i have i pr i'm probably really 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 close to it i'm in the in the lab right now um okay so so without spoiling it give some scenes like uh, i remember uh one section i was watching i think at the very beginning i don't know if it's the same beginning for uh, the Resident Evil 2, the original, uh, based on the truck driver with the burger and all that stuff. I don't know if that was like a, um, you know, a, a different version of a reimagining of that beginning uh, for the game itself. Uh, so it, it kind of is was. that scene. Okay. That scene was still in there. Um, and they, they didn't take away because that's where you and Claire separate. Okay. So I, I don't I don't feel like yeah, that was really changed too much from from what it was originally. Um, what okay. what kind of changes when you come across Marvin? So Marvin, you kind of meet him in a different way. The same thing happens to him, but he, you meet him in a cert, a different circumstance than you do in the original. The yeah, that's the cop. Okay. But it didn't it didn't take away from the story. It didn't ruin it. You weren't bummed out. Oh, at least I wasn't bummed out about it. Um, it, it made sense. Mr. X that you come across was just as intense, it, if not scarier, because, oh my gosh, there's a scene when you first see him. My heart, I wish I had a heart rate monitor that I could just like have up and, and, mo and, and, and see, because my race, my race, I can't even talk. I'm like so nervous. Race. I was like so nervous. Creed. My heart was racing. <laughs> My heart right. was racing and pounding right. and like just to see him it was so intense and he's just he is just he's not okay, really so... running but he's chasing you down and he's like such a big dude so he has these these large steps just coming after you and oh my gosh so so i, I want to see if i remember correctly you're talking about um the guy in the leather suit that's walking really slow, right? That's that that's what you're referring to? Yeah. Okay. Um maybe okay, I think I, I caught a clip of of him like bashing someone head head in from the inside of a prison wall or yes. something like that. Yes. Yeah, that, that's see, I can't play <laughs> I can. Physically I can, but I just after the Resident Evils and uh, maybe Silent Hill. I don't think I've played any game that was considered like a scary game after that. Okay, well, the last scary game that made me feel this way was Silent Hill. And okay. you know what? Resident Evil 2 just takes it away. Like, there is... No, okay, it's, it's like a different type of scary between the Silent Hill 2 because with Resident Evil okay. 2, um, the scary that I have is just... It's more of, it's like, it's just nervous. Like you don't know what's gonna happen around that corner. You don't you, know. Did how you do any clips is. though? I have I have clips. I didn't I didn't get to set it up, but oh my god, uh, I'm I'm working I'm working on just compiling you gotta get a some video clips out. of just like all these times that I screamed. And the thing is, is like me trying to hold my screams in because I live in a no, pardon me, I live in a duplex and I'm playing late at night. I don't need right. my neighbors to hear these blood curling screams and call nine one one and all I'm doing is just playing a game. <laughs> so I'm like, my screams are just like <laughs> <laughs> so you gotta get like you gotta get uh, a towel or is your room uh, is your room treated for sound no i can't about doing it i'm thinking about doing it for this for this room too it, you can or? i i can't like i have to keep the windows open and okay like i can soundproof it so much but the windows gotta stay open it gotta get stuffy and hot in here but um it was it was good and i have this very this goes with any game I'm being chased and I'm nervous, but I have this very, this nature of just like when I'm running, apologizing. I don't know where it comes from, but the first thing I was like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm like, I don't know. Like I try to stop myself from doing that. While you're running away? Yes. Yes. 
I did it. I, I started understand. doing it when I was playing like uh, Dead by Daylight. I noticed that I had a habit of doing that when I played Dead by Daylight, and I do that now. And I'm like, these people can't hear me. They don't know they're they're zombies, right? <laughs> or, or right. they're big as yeah, Mr. X, and I'm just like panic, or I I get a very nervous laugh and giggle, and I just start laughing, and I don't know. <laughs> Okay. All right. So next question I have for you is uh, the puzzles. How different are the puzzles from what you remember? Um, pretty different, but just as hard. They're not. They're okay. not like really holding your hand to, uh, to figure it out. It's kind of like okay. Well, they they give you the basics of what you kind of need and understanding like little clues. Like the last puzzle that I had to do that was really long was finding the these uh, pawn pieces, these chess pieces, to open up a door, which is really cool. And that's in, down in the sewers, and that was that was a little bit of a pain. A little bit. Okay. Because the sewers, um, doesn't matter. Remake, this one, is just as confusing to get around. Like, I was going around in circles. I'm like, I don't know how to get to this spot. I see it on my map. I see the stairs. It's not where I end up when I take these stairs. <laughs> so where am I? Um but they're they're fun i i enjoy them and it's a whole lot more intense when you're okay. doing puzzles because okay here's the frustrating part the zombies in here I, i'm playing it on on standard and which is pretty much normal mode they, what does that mean for me the since level I don't play the, the levels like that. the difficulty levels got it so it doesn't seem to matter that i'm playing it on standard they take they are like bullet sponges and resident evil already has so much limited ammo that you can uh, pick up or create uh and i swear there's like some zombies i'm i'm all headshots this is why i picked it up on pc is because i can have all of those headshots um yeah i was gonna ask you why do you why you decided to do pc instead of like a uh, playstation 4 or xbox Keyboard and mouse, headshots, everything. Uh, but even then, like having those headshots, those like five, six, seven shots to the head before they're dead. And sometimes they're not even fully dead. They're just down there. And next, you know, they climb right back up and you're like, what? I can't. I can't do it. I can't. So I, I now just use my bullets like single shots just to stun them and just so that I can walk past them. But the problem is that right. they're always there. Once you once you kill them, they're dead. They, they, they don't really come back. Maybe a new one will come through the window. But okay. doing the puzzles while you're being chased is so hard. It's hard and it's scary because you got to time Wait, it. Like, what, do you, what do you mean? You're doing actual puzzles and then you're being chased by zombies in a room or like how how are they doing that okay so yeah it's like it, it's kind of like that um because the zombies can bust through the doors they don't just stay in the area it's not like you can exit the area and they stay there no okay they can come chasing after you they don't go into the main lobby um <laughs> Uh, Mr. X does. Mr. Oh right. my God. When I saw, okay, so Mr. X is probably the one that can literally chase you in every single room. It don't matter to him. <laughs> okay. X gonna give it to you. Okay. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. That's yes, crazy. Yes, Ruru's right. Your gun is basically tickling you. So there's like, there's a puzzle that you kind of have to figure out in the library and you're going to open the stairs. And going ladder, you move a bookshelf. You can only move a bookshelf one one position at a time before you know that Mr. X is right on top of you and about ready to smash your head in, and you have to run away. And it's it's so stressful. And I like there in that okay. in that library, there's already three zombies that are in there. Right. So you have to avoid. So how them. do you how do you know how do you know he's he's coming though? Do you hear like footsteps? footsteps or, Very okay, for intense footsteps and there is there's one point where i thought that i was going to be um i was going to save because um the playstation kind of has two different wings you have the east wing you have your west wing and usually the i think it's the west wing usually has the the two liquors in it 
they're just kind of crawling around in it and the other side doesn't so i thought you know what i'll go and okay. deal with this side i'll be on this side he's not gonna come on this side because i have these two <laughs> other um pains yeah. i have to deal with yeah. no he's, he's not no. coming over here i thought no. it was okay i thought it was safe i was opening up these lockers i'm like what are those footsteps like that can't be him what are those footsteps no it was him coming up the stairs and i'm like oh my god and i got pinned in between a liquor and mr x and mm. i i panic i let go of my controller and i just hid my face i can't i can't <laughs> I can't do scary um, games, you know, I, but I'm, I'm watching your stream and I see, you know, the different things going on and, you know, having a good time. That's great. Um, the other question that just popped up, uh, was save points. How does the game take care of save points? Okay. So they still have the typewriter, but with the normal mode, um, you don't have to really pick up ribbons anymore. So in the original, original resident evil you had the little ribbons that you used to save on the typewriter um i am a constant saver i am okay. at currently like i think 47 or 48 saves <laughs> i like 48. I mean, yeah it's like 47 or 48 i'm in there i'm like i'm around there no okay. matter every time i saw a typewriter oh save <laughs> Typewriter, save um not that there there's type there's tons of typewriters it's just more of like you're repeatedly going into same area sometimes if you're playing on the harder difficulties they do have the ribbon so you have limited amount of saves like i'm going on on saturday my boyfriend's going it on hard he only like he finished the game last night and he only had like 20 20 saves i think okay um compared to i'm just over halfway through the game and i have 47 so there's no auto save. So once you die, you go back to your last save point and do it all over again. <laughs> mm. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, so ammo. Okay, so you have your pistol, you have shotguns. What else do you get? You get a knife, yeah. right? You have a knife that is that you kind of randomly find because it does take damage as you use it. And you can use it as like a defensive mechanism. So if you happen to be captured by or grabbed by a zombie or a monster, you can use the knife or the a nade or a flashbang, whatever you have on you, to like shove into their neck or into their mouth to get away without taking damage so much. Um, but with the knife, um, if you stab it into them, you pretty much have to kill that zombie if you want it back. Okay, so you do. Okay, so you're able to get it back. Yeah, that's cool. But again, it takes damage, okay. so eventually it will break, and then you pretty much have to go and find another one if you can. Okay. Okay. All right. And, Is yeah. there anything else going on in the game that <sighs> uh, you want to give warnings about, or there is one. Oh, is Wesker one thing. in there? Yeah, one thing. What's the one, one thing? One thing that I. I really do miss and I wish they had it and it's something so small. So the loading screen, the starting screen, when it brings up Resident yeah. Evil, I Resident wish it's evil. I wish yeah, that's the voice that I feel is missing. Do. They don't do that. They don't <laughs> they do don't? that. And Did I, they do that? I oh, that's lame. I wish it was there. I so wish it was there. That was the best. Um, Resident Ruru, Evil. Ruru and Chad asked if I got the rocket launcher and the flamethrower. Rocket launcher, yeah, I think, comes thrower. later later on. I do have the flamethrower. I got that in the sewer. Um, Tin Man 34, thank you for the follow. Welcome. Tin Man, what's up, man? Um, Welcome, bro. There, I haven't gotten the Magnum yet. Um, okay. So this thing, even though there's certain elements and certain puzzles, if you don't solve it, you just won't get it. So one of the puzzles and things that you have to search for to be able to get the the Magnum, I haven't actually accomplished it yet. Funny enough, okay. I did get the attachments for it. I just didn't get the gun yet, and I I don't think I can go back and get it now. <laughs> I think I've okay. So one of, one of the questions, um, I guess I've been thinking about as it relates to some of those games, um. After certain games, you finish them, they give you the option to have infinite ammo. Did Resident Evil ever do anything like that or, or allow the game to be a little bit easier for you to go uh, for another playthrough? Yeah, I mean, there there are options that will unlock. I will find out 
that out when I finish the game. But okay. I mean, they they are. They've always had really fun ways of making you want to come back to replay the game. But I think that's what that's what made the game so much fun originally to begin with. I mean, they like really nonsense thing of being able to come back to play as tofu. Like, who thought about that? Who's be like, you know right. what? Let's unlock it so that they can play as a piece of tofu. That why does that exist? You don't right. know, but it made the game fun. It made that challenge. It was so good. So yeah, there there are stuff like that comes in. Um, I did start off my my playthrough with Leon. I haven't played Claire's past, so you can obviously go back and play as Claire and experience okay. the game from where what she was doing and 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 go through all the same stuff. So um it's it's in there. I don't know if I want to I'm like I think I need a little bit of break after I finish this this playthrough because it's super intense for me. Um, okay. But um are there different paths for Leon? Yes. For Leon. Yes, Claire. there is. Um it's kind of like she's almost following behind him in a way, so her experiences are a bit different in how she comes across the same things that Leon do does. It's not exactly the same, but it's pretty close. Okay, I think I know the answer to this question, but will you get it for any other platforms besides PC? No. I mean, I can play yeah. it like me and my boyfriend game share, so I can play it for Xbox, but I'm fine. Okay. I'm fine with it. I if it if it had to be on a console because I'm one of those weirdos that don't if I play a certain game on a certain platform, I don't really want to change over with the exception to PC. Okay. So if I was to play it, play it on a console, I'd play it on PlayStation. Okay. Okay, fair enough. All right. Any other thoughts? Any other final thoughts for Resident Evil 2? Um, the remake? This has got to be one of the best made remade games ever. Of all the games that have ever been remade, this one has to be the best. I know I haven't finished it yet, but I can <laughs> say this 100% without a doubt. You're putting your stamp on it. Yep. Okay, so what about Resident Evil uh, series coming to Netflix? Are you interested in that? Do you have a particular uh, wish list of particular individuals being in, in that particular series if it does happen? I don't know. Like, I'll watch it, but I'm not as excited about it. Like, I mean, you have your standard people that you kind of want in there. You have Leon, you have Chris that you, you definitely want to be able to see, but... Like, I think it would be great in a way if they had a mixture of a couple familiar faces, but on top of that, they have, like, a whole other cast. Okay. Like, another storyline of people trying to take down Umbrella. Okay. Younger? Um, certain age group that you're looking for? Or what, what do you think? Somewhere like around mid twenties, mid okay. mid late twenties, around there, um, kind of like you know that kind of got thrown into it, similar to how um, Leon did. Like when Resident Evil Two comes in, Leon is this is his first day of work. This is his first day of work at Raccoon <laughs> PD. You know, right. I know, um, and he right. doesn't know what's happening. But then he like just gets finally tossed in there. has this thing of wanting you know wanting to change take down this corporation like what is what's happening like they're destroying this, this world i live in the city that i live in um somewhat similar to that but from just a different perspective a different path okay fair enough fair enough so so there's that uh, resident evil series coming to netflix that that's going to be pretty cool i may check out one or two episodes of that if i can stomach it you know with Stuff like that, I get wigged out. Um, Amanda Seals, HBO special uh, that happened last night around 10 uh, p.m. I think Eastern Standard Time. It is available on HBO right now if you have HBO. She's a comedian. She's on Insecure. Uh, from what I understand, she's fantastic. If you're into uh, comedy stuff, uh, you'll enjoy that. Uh, Blade TV show. I know we briefly talked about it before this recording. Um, what are your thoughts on if they did a Blade? Because they did what? Blade 1, 2, 3? I don't know which one was the Trinity version of Blade. But um, would you check out Blade if they did Blade? Only if it's as cheesy as the movies were. 
Okay. It's got to be as They're cheesy as the cheesy. movie for it. We, we, uh, we just watched a couple of them a few weeks ago, and I'm like, oh, my okay. God. This is... It's so bad, it's good. It was good, though. <laughs> it was, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the Blade series. It was pretty good. Turtles was cheesy. Yeah, but it right? was like, it, it, it was okay for it to be cheesy because it's a children's TV show. It was so good, though. But it's, it's, I mean, what, what else are they going to, like, make the story about? Does it say what the story is going to be about? Hmm. Nah, I didn't read that much into it, but I'm going to have a link in the show notes as it relates. So, <laughs> Blade Trinity, oh dear God, no. Um, I'm going to have a link in the show notes in regards to uh, the Blade stuff. There's a couple of rumors. There's, I think there's one more. I think one more rumor thing that we may have on here. Um, but um, but I would watch it. I would watch it because I've always enjoyed Blade. Uh, Blade is an amazing character. Is Blade DC? It is. I don't he's know. in that universe, That's right? Like... It's an oh, interesting not... question to ask, so. right? I think Blade is DC. I believe no. so. So no. He's not. No, he's Marvel. He's Marvel. Why Maybe ZC? that's why he's so cheesy. Wow. That's why he's so I've cheesy. Always, it makes sense. I've now. always gave him I've always gave him the DC camp. That's interesting. I right, never so there really is that. paid much attention to that. But it is Marvel right. though. Just like I kind of forgot about okay. that fact. So next thing is uh, 343 Studios teased. An upcoming announcement concerning Halo, the Master Chief Collection. The announcement will occur during the HCS Invitational at South by Southwest 2019. And I'm not sure exactly what that is going to entail as of right now, but um, one of the things I did, so let's just catch up on some of the stuff that I've been doing, right? So I've been trying to really fine-tune the streaming experience on my end for my channel, right? And um, so we, we did the lighting thing, you know, got the mic thing all set up, right? So making adjustments. I reconnected the PlayStation 3, which is over there, which you can't see because all that stuff is behind the camera, right? The Xbox is here, right? TV's behind it. So I'm going back to uh, really play some of the titles that we used to play uh, back then, right? Whether that's a Max Payne thing or Lost Planet 2, which I still have for the Xbox 360. Uh, the Xbox 360, I'm considering replugging that in to play some of those uh, titles as well, including the titles from uh, the PlayStation as well as the Xbox One, right? So, so that's been my thing lately to try to uh, maximize all the titles that I can uh, stream on this new setup, right? Because because uh, I'm really digging everything that's been happening on the, on the channel, as well as the frustration that has it's gotten us to to finally have video uh, for me <laughs> this past week and a half. So that's where I've been, right? So when I see announcements like the Halo thing, my point is um, I'm looking forward to seeing exactly how massive the announcement is for me to go back into the Master Chief Collection uh, to play that. Have you done any other platforms? As far as streaming late. Um, I've actually been ignoring Oh wait, you mean like platforms as in my consoles or platforms as into checking out what else is out there outside of Twitch? Well, no, no, not not mixer and stuff like that, just like you know, your consoles and different platforms. Cause I know you were considering at what point uh to stream the uh the switch. Yes. Right? I had to wait and for some Oh, right. components to come in because uh, the switch for me to be able to stream it, it has to be docked so that I have that HDMI input into my uh, Avermedia capture card. Um, Got it. But it also is the only console that doesn't have an optical port because the PlayStation okay. 4 and the Xbox have the optical port. And that's how I always get um, got my audio, audio. to my, uh, right. my headset here. Um, right. I actually had to go and get uh audio splitter so that i can have a, a line in that goes into you know my my mixer goes into my my capture device so that i can actually hear the game because it's either one or the other so if i if i right. didn't have that if i didn't have the audio splitter then it was just only going to go to my my stream which is great for them that's what's important but then it's really boring for me like it's like 
Right, because they you hear no, stuff and you don't hear anything, right? Yeah, there's no audio cues. There's, there's nothing right. that's super exciting for you to to notice that it's happening, especially if like if you're you're playing something and there's some kind of weird buildup and you don't know it's coming because you can't hear it, but you can see it on the screen. Um, so that's what that's been my holdup, and I just got those um those extra components in a couple of days ago, so I have to go and set that up and, and bring it in. Uh, that okay. I, I've been kind of putting off a couple of my games and playing it any further because I want to stream it. Um, and yeah, I kind of like my PlayStation and my Xbox has been a little bit neglected. Okay, okay. not a little bit, a lot okay. neglected, a lot neglected. <laughs> <laughs> I just plugged mine in. It's been almost a year for the Xbox, and I don't necessarily think that I'm going to do like Xbox Live and stuff like that for it. Uh, since I'm playing most of my online stuff on the PlayStation 4, but the fact that I can go back and play Ninja Gaiden 3, Razor's Edge on the PlayStation 3, which would be really cool, or even Lost Planet 2 on the Xbox 360, which I don't think ever got a backwards compatible treatment on the Xbox One, that's exciting to me to go back and then check those things out. Well, my, for me, the one thing, there's a couple things I want to try, but um, that I want to play and I want to start, but I'm trying to okay. be so good about this year about finishing games that I start. So that's that's huge thing. How's, how's your backlog, DJ? Terrible. My backlog is terrible. <laughs> because that's another thing why I didn't want to buy Resident Evil 2. It was like, I started Omen Sight. I didn't finish Omen Sight. I need to do this. And I right. got sucked in. I got sucked right, right, in. Right, right, right. So my goal is to finish Resident Evil 2, take a little bit of a break for that, because I think I think I'm like a maybe a few hours left in a finishing Leon storyline. Um, okay. So I can go back and finish up Omen Sight. But, but yeah, my my backlog's terrible. Mm. It's sad. It's really sad. Like I I need it's a like right. a one month staycation so that I can possibly finish maybe like two games. Yeah, but I see you running through Resident Evil 2 pretty fast though. Yeah. So that's why I feel like there's like a few more hours left in and I'm like, okay, good. At least I can say I finished one game this year. We're like almost the end of the first month and I haven't finished a single game yet. Yeah. So you should like, if, if, if you're able to sometime in the near future, Vayne is pretty cool. I got to vouch for it. It's nice. There's, it's nice. There is a means I do want to figure out how I can stream my mobile games okay um because i think that's fun i mean i gotta figure out how to do there is like you can use the Streamlabs app on it but it doesn't have all those bells and whistles that i'm used to having so i would like to have it somehow if i could import it and have the video being fed into my xsplit i i, I want to definitely figure that out and i think somebody's using a razor a razor phone um, that has those capabilities, but I'm not 100% sure, but it's too late. I forgot to tell you, I bought an S9 Plus. <laughs> you tell me this now. <laughs> okay. All right. So what do you think? I love it. I love it. Okay. I love it so much, and it's so big. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's a dope phone. So I have, I have the 9. I love it. It's yeah, really, I really bought, dope. I bought the S9 Plus. I originally only went into Verizon. How did that happen? Well, okay, so I went into there. Well, first, first of all, I went over to Panda Express because we I, we really wanted to eat Panda. The food place. Yes, the food okay. place. And right. we went over there, but I really wanted the hot and sour soup. And they're like, oh, it's going to be about 15 minutes before it's done. I'm like, okay, that's fine. And I'll it, be back. And it comes with a phone. No, 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 no. <laughs> Verizon's okay. right next door to it. And they said 15 okay. minutes. So rather than me sitting in the restaurant, I'm like, let's go over to Verizon. Because my son originally was on Sprint. So I went over there to ask them some questions. They'd be like, how hard it would be to bring my son um, over, if they have any deals right. for, you know, Reporting over his numbers and all that other stuff, and I asked them. So while I was waiting for for help, I saw the S9 Plus, and you know I was playing around with it, and I decided to take a picture. And Dangerous. I was like, "What is?" Like I decided to take a picture. I was like, "What is this blur mode thing, or uh, blur yep. background thing?" And I was like taking pictures of my son, and I'm like, "These are the best pictures I ever took of you. I need to have this phone." <laughs> and it's that's how, that's how it gets you every time it really was and they actually happened to have a few good uh deals that were going on and um yeah that's kind of how that happened and i'm like okay. oh so, so what, i came cool for hot that? and sour soup and i got a phone 
and you got a phone with it. So what's cool about that is um, you still have a 3.5 uh, jack, yes? Yes. If I didn't so have the jack, audio adapter. And, I, and if it didn't have the expandable memory, the storage, I mean, uh, I wouldn't have gotten it. But it did. It still had it, and it looked really good, and it's nice, and I love it. Nice. Nice. So, well, yeah, congratulations. I would love to figure out a way to be able to stream mobile games, especially since I have a nice bigger screen here. It's cool. Congratulations on that. That's a that's a dope dope uh, buy. Um, okay, so why do I have? Why didn't you tell me? Okay, Cyberpunk twenty two thousand seventy seven. Oh, I didn't what see that. <laughs> why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you tell me? I gotta correct that. Okay, so Cyber. Uh, 2077 head rider joins blizzard okay so there's a lot of conversations surrounding that um because it seems like we haven't gotten any release date for the game yet right mm -hmm. and individuals who are considered uh, very influential and the game's uh, creative process uh by way of the the narrative is is gone so what happens right but uh, it seems like on the tail end of the game being done that you can play the game from beginning to end as far as the story is concerned, this is when this particular guy, um, I don't have his name, but we're going to have his name in the show notes. I don't want to butcher his name. Um, he's not there anymore. Now he's with Blizzard. Uh, any thoughts on that? That, I guess, okay. I, first of all, I, I guess it's okay. Because you don't know okay. what the story is going to be like right now. Exactly. Nobody right, knows right, right. what it is. So you don't have a baseline to be able to tell like if it was a bad move or not right. but it does make you wonder i'm like okay so who took over for it um did right. they did he already lay down a really good foundation um for the rest of the team to work off of those are the things that you gotta you gotta right. think about um i hope that doesn't mean some further delay which again because i didn't say an announcement day you can't really be disappointed about having a delayed release date you don't know what it is you just want more information about you know what's happening what's our timeline looking like which i think was a very smart decision for them just just yeah. to like leave those things out yeah so um one of the things that um i really appreciate was the fact that they gave us the opportunity to check out that 50 minute demo or whatever you want to call it right walking mm -hmm. through the process of of this is what you can expect from from the game and that was an amazing display right that that 50 minutes i think it was released on youtube or whatever when we finally got a chance to see it that was amazing to see and uh hopefully we can see more of that uh very very soon so that's what's going on with that blizzard and a head writer who's there now. Well, what franchise will he be writing for Blizzard? From what I understand, based on how the announcement stuff has been playing out, uh, the recent announcement that came from Blizzard is a Diablo game. So that's the, the next project they're, they're listing. So I wouldn't be surprised if it's that. The, the next Diablo uh, game uh, that's coming out of uh, Blizzard. Uh, those awesome folks over there. So that's what's going on with that. Uh, Nintendo's development, Metroid Prime 4. I haven't played Metroid in a long, long time. I don't know when the last time you played any Metroid games, uh, but I haven't necessarily been as excited for a Metroid, although I, I loved every, you know, Smash that I've been able to play, you know, those kind of experiences. But it seems like there's excitement for it, but there's like... um. I, we're tired of waiting for it kind of feel. Uh, what, are you, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, I, I kind of feel very neutral about it. Okay. Um, only, only because I, I guess Metroid wasn't so much my type of game. So I'm like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Metroid 4 is the new Final Fantasy 7 remake. Yeah, that's... <laughs> That's rough. It's definitely rough. People Good game, gonna, though. People are still going to jump on it. They're still going to be excited. They're still going to buy it. It's Nintendo. Come on. Right. So, okay. So, what did you end up getting for, for your, your Switch? You have... I have... You get? Let's go Eevee. Um, Harvest Moon. Okay. 
Oh, I have one more. Just Dance 2019. And okay. oh my goodness, I know I have one more game in there. What was it? Smash? No, Smash. No, Smash. I got Smash. That's it. So those four games. Okay. You got Smash. Okay, good, 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 good. So what have you played more on that platform? Smash. Uh, Smash. Okay, yeah. Yeah, Smash is dope. Um, all right, so uh, next thing is Paladins. Paladins is a game very similar to Overwatch. Very similar to Overwatch. I know there's a camp where they love Overwatch and they don't like Paladins and vice versa. You know, I like it. You know, it's kind of like looking at the Anthem and Destiny thing. Like They're very similar games, but they're not the same games, right? So one of the things that they recently did for Paladins is they made a cross-play for most of the other platforms with the exception of PlayStation 4. Right. And um, I play Paladins on PlayStation 4. So uh, one of the things that I can say that I really appreciate is the fact that now when you're loading in a queue for a match, it's much faster than last year. So they, they've been, you know, kudos to the team. I have to say they've been making a lot of updates for you to be able to play a smooth experience on on this Overwatch like game right but uh, i love overwatch never played paladins paladins is dope you know it's free to play uh dope characters dope you know art you know just like overwatch um and that's that's what i've been playing you know and and i really dig it i have a lot of fun with it it's great but the fact that the cross play is still a conversation that we're having as it relates to certain platforms is what's on the table right now your thoughts on that um that's just where PlayStation gets so much flack just because they're not so easily to jump on the whole cross play of things. Um, hopefully they'll do what they did for, you know, uh, Fortnite where eventually they'll get to that point and be like, fine, fine, fine. But is there a big enough audience um, on Paladins to really push PlayStation to, you know, okay, make you that, need it yeah. to make it happen? I'm not too sure because like... Player base for Fortnite is huge, huge compared to the player base for Paladins. Um, so I don't know if it'll ever be something at the top of their list there. I mean, it, it kind of really does X for PS4 players. Yeah, and, and I think that uh, it's, you know, you're absolutely right. It struggles with having a, a poster individual that can make those those push, right, right for, for the ability for crossplay to happen on a PlayStation 4. There isn't a person that stands out for me in that particular community that they are this individual that plays Paladins religiously, right? Mm -hmm. I don't see that. You know, I know that there's people playing it. They retweet stuff on their on their social uh, media profile. All those things are, are great. They're there. But there's not one person that just stands out unless, you know, I haven't done enough research. But should I? There's There's some names that you can just quickly mention as it relates to certain titles that we play, whether that's, you know, a Destiny title or a Fortnite title, as you mentioned, and stuff like that. We can think of someone we can name right away that stands out, you know, or PUBG, there's a person that stands out immediately, and I don't even watch his stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. So there's people that stands out automatically when you think of certain titles, but for Paladins, I don't, I haven't seen or heard of him or her. So I'm not sure how the push is going to happen with that. Um. Maybe you never, you really never know. But right now, I I don't see it happening, especially not anytime soon. Yeah, uh, yeah, sad, sad, sad. But um, yeah, okay. So Anthem demo, uh, definitely hear your thoughts on that. I downloaded it. I won't be able to play it till February first, um, because I didn't do any pre-order or anything like that. Your thoughts on the Anthem uh, conversation right now? Um, I would love to be able to play more of it if it will allow me to. So okay. I originally see the demo came out at a very bad time because that's that's the day that everybody was playing Resident Evil here. Uh, the original plan was for me to, to start off playing an Anthem, but um, right. yeah, like just server issues and people like all of my friends were having issues trying to get in, uh, trying to get a game started, getting kicked out. So I delayed it. When I finally got to go and try it, it was. Um, Saturday. Saturday, I could get into the game. I got into the little social lobby area. It looked beautiful. But trying to load up a mission, yeah. I was not able to. 
I wasn't able to at all. Like it would, it would sit there in the loading screen and I had it sitting there for 30 minutes, almost 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Yeah. Be, it, it, it like the bar would just go jump back go i'm like okay maybe maybe i just gotta go and restart it well i mean i think it was like my second or third time that of me no my third time trying to get in because the first time first two times i thought it was just like okay maybe my game's bugged so i closed it out but yeah that 30 minutes i gave it longer time i think the other two times was like i gave it maybe like four or five minutes to see if right. I was going to do anything. And maybe I didn't wait long enough, but 30 minutes was already too long just to get into a mission. And the thing is, is I don't think I saw anybody else having that same problem that I was having. So I don't know and if you're it was playing it on PC. which platform PC. Okay. PC. And I don't know if okay. it's something I'm just doing wrong or the game really is still that kind of particularly buggy. Right. Um, but it looks nice from there. I just can't say anything about trying out any of the, the javelins or the action of it. I would love to. And maybe later on today, I will give it a try again. Right, right, right. But yeah, it's interesting. It's, it's very interesting because I don't know who decides to. Are they like closed off or something like that for the world? Like, because Resident Evil 2 is a big game. You know what I mean? Like, why would you drop the Anthem demo? I don't know if it was the same day, but around the same time. So, so the reason I'm kind of bringing that back up is because that's the same conversation we had with uh, Titanfall 2, right? If I'm understanding, they're both EA titles, right? Mm -hmm. I believe, right? So Titanfall 2 was dropped in a, in a window where all the big super boss games, whether it was a shooter game or not, was dropped around the same time that they put Titanfall into that mix. And as I get ready to to prep to play it on stream and stuff like that, right, as far as the campaign goes for Titanfall 2, from what I understand, it's one of the best campaigns is when it came out, but nobody really played it because of all the games that came out around that time. Just neglected it, right? So then the anthem demo situation comes out as I'm seeing all the news and stuff that happening on social media, and people are mentioning um, all the the challenges that they're having with the game itself. And it's like, but why? Why that? Why this time? Personally, I don't think it was such a bad time. Yeah, I mean, there's there's you know Resident Evil that everybody been hyped about. Right. Um, but kind of like you, there's also a really big audience that don't want to play horror games. Um, it's okay. Fair so enough. that, that kind of balances out. And the fact that they are two different genre of games, so it doesn't necessarily work against them, but even, even so, even if, uh, even if a majority of the gaming population was playing Resident Evil 2, they still had issues, buggy issues of just logging in with the player base that's in their VIP that pre-ordered to get into this. So I think that kind of just worked out to be like, if you did have the full audience that you, you could possibly expect trying to get right. in, it wouldn't have been able to happen. I think it would have been worse, in fact. Um, and I think uh, there is some, some post that I saw, and I think it was on Reddit, that the person who did the the packet sniffing for uh, No Man's Sky to find out that it didn't include multiplayer, <laughs> right? <laughs> also, um, also did it on Anthem to find okay. out that the reason why they were having so many issues of people trying to get in is that if it failed to reconnect or failed to connect you into a game, it would open up almost another. I don't know what the correct term session? is. Or session instance. Yeah of reconnecting on their server. So for every like one person, there would be two or three other instances of it trying to reconnect to get you into there. So essentially mm. what EA was doing to themselves was DDoSing themselves with their own code. <laughs> That's crazy. So... That's crazy. Any, anything that you saw that you enjoyed? I can't. I, re I really wish I have to go back and I have to go and dive into it and try it again. Um, try to see if I can get a mission started, but I did get explore, you know, the opening area 
And it's beautiful. It is really beautiful. I love the way that it looks. I just want to see the rest of the world. Yeah, it's definitely a beautiful game. Uh, watched a couple of streams on it, and uh, it looks absolutely amazing. Okay, so next thing, uh, Fallout 76 going free-to-play rumors. 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 Fallout 76 may go free-to-play. Your thoughts on that? I think they have to at this point. I don't even know if anybody's still playing it. I don't even think even people want to give it the time of day anymore. So wow. <laughs> that's so sad. Does that mean they're going to include like some type of microtransactions in there to make some type of money off of it? I don't know. But uh, that this particular article, let's see how fast it opens on the tab. This is I'm trying. Uh, something new here with this thing. Uh, Publisher76 have denied the uh, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC game is going free-to-play. Rumors of the online title switching its payment model surfaced after consumers noted at least one retailer, one retailer was no longer stocking standard versions of the game. So the article will be linked in the show notes. Uh, Fallout 76 may, may, these are rumors, go free-to-play. Okay, if it, if it does go to free to play, if, would you give it a try? Right. Yeah, I would. I, I like free to play stuff. Like, this is free to play. Even though I want all the char characters in Paladins, I still haven't, you know, pulled the trigger to, no pun intended, but pick up, purchase that pack, right? <laughs> but I would try it. I, I don't see what I don't have any issues with with uh, free to play stuff. I, I love I love games that are dope, uh, and uh, give you the option to check out the game. You know, if, and if games it, like that are live or dope. If it if it does go free to play, I'll go back and and like I I did uninstall it from my Xbox. I'll go back and give it a try, but it's just so buggy. They need to smooth those things out. They need to. They have a lot of stuff to fix because even if it's free to play, people will play it. Might get a few more players there. If it's not enjoyable because it's so buggy, you're just gonna get more backlash for it. Right. And people will complain. Gamers love to complain. Complain about everything. Right. So so if it goes free to play and they have, you know, certain issues, like you said, they're gonna complain anyway. Yeah. <laughs> it's even so, if it's free. It doesn't matter. It doesn't even matter. If it's free. It, even if it's free. So uh the last thing that we have on the show notes today, and as you notice that we are a very um tight knit show in twenty nineteen. Uh, intentional uh, about the topics that we cover. Uh, if you've been listening and watching, thank you so much for uh, tuning into this particular episode, which is uh, 484 uh, of the show. Uh, links uh, to subscribe and all that stuff is in the panels as well uh, as um, the show radio info. Check it, all that stuff out there. So last thing I wanted to just brain on, right? Uh, since, since we're approaching... Uh, Dead or Alive, which is March 1st, right? Uh, that's right around the corner. And if you guys in chat have any questions before we wrap up, this is the last topic uh, uh, of thought, right? Do you believe that Dead or Alive, the friends, is over-sexualized? 100%. Do you believe 100%. 100%. It is. 100%. It is, you... but it okay. doesn't bother me. Okay. Okay. All right. So, so elaborate on that. I want to hear your thoughts on that. I think it's just one of those things that I automatically associate with Dead or Alive. Okay. Um, I mean, I think it was the very first game. We're, we're going to try to be as family friendly here. That had, um, <laughs> it was the very first game that had jiggle physics. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Fair I enough. Mean, they were a little bit out there, but at the, at like, True. Growing, growing up and, and experiencing Dead or Alive, it didn't make me feel weird. It didn't make me feel, like, inadequate. It didn't make me feel negative towards it. It's just one okay. of those games where I feel it's just one of its quirks that define what the okay. series is. And right. it's, it's, it's very much part of the core presentation of, of the game. It right? is. And right. and the thing is, it doesn't bother me. And okay, do you think it gets a bad rap for that though? Yeah, one hundred percent, it does. Okay. It really does because not 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 everybody can be like me who thinks that it's ridiculous. Because there's gonna be people who are like, but there's kids that play this. Yeah, right. But it's not the only game that's over sexualized because there's uh, mobile games that are um, 
very borderline hentai type games that do not get maybe as much as a bad rap as a game that is i guess more in the forefront of things as it relates to this particular community whether it's the fighting game community and stuff like that so i'm trying to be like very what's the word i'm looking for um I really don't have a word for it where there are other games that get bad rap for the genre, but I don't think it's as much as dead or alive. Why do I feel that way? Like why, why? Cause maybe because there's so many games of dead or alive because they have one through whatever. And then six is coming out in March, but it's not the only game that has exposed um, characters that way. An option of gaming. Is that fair to say? Yeah, that's fair to say um okay for me because it's always been there like i I think if they took it out if they if they went the opposite direction and they put more clothes on top of their characters would it change the gameplay no it wouldn't it it wouldn't change the gameplay it'd still be a great fighter or beach volleyball game whatever you want to go with here um right but it wouldn't necessarily be dead or alive Okay. It wouldn't be. It would be like all the other fighters. And there's always something that it brings that's new. Like Mortal Kombat has their extreme over-the-top violence and death and, and fatalities. Um, right. Which, funny enough, like I think I feel a little bit more negative about that than, you know, clothing items and jiggle physics of Dead or Alive. Um, right. Or the volleyball game. Yeah. <laughs> right. I I I also think that when it first came out, man, when did Dead or Alive One first came out? But I think over the years, they've toned it down. Would you say they, that they have, uh, toned, they have <laughs> toned it down? They have like made it a little bit more realistic in a way, but so right. as their 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 characters have become a little bit more realistic. Right? Um, Is that enough to be okay? I guess. Because again, for me, it doesn't bother. There's... It doesn't bother me. So, so right. when 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 Dead or Alive originally came out, it was in around late '90s. What is that? Mid late '90s or something like that. Um, yeah, the first one I played was two. I don't re- I don't recall playing one. I think I went from two, three, four. Uh, played five, uh, half five, um, and most likely will play six, depending on how you know that goes for me. I, I should be able to play six also. And see, growing up and playing that, because I'm pretty sure it was like mid 90s. So I was like 11, 12 years old, or maybe 13 years old. And I had Mortal Kombat and I had Dead or Alive. My parents had more problems with me playing Mortal Kombat than I did Dead or Alive, which growing because of up. The blood and stuff. Yeah. Right. Growing right. up that kind of gives you that sends you that message of like sexuality is okay blood and gore is not so from that mentality of growing up there it was i was like okay it's it's not a bad thing because my parents don't have a negative reaction they know what's happening in this game my mom's played this game with me a couple times my brothers have played with with me you know so it, it kind of starts to form that path and my my parents and my my aunts even like the rest of my extended family my aunts and uncles when we had family thanksgiving or christmas doa was okay mortal mm. kombat was not we could not bring mortal kombat over to my aunt's house whatsoever it was almost banned like growing up like yeah. in, in certain family houses it was like you can't do that right i remember that so obviously i'm just gonna like think nothing of it because there was no negative repercussions that came with this game so going to my adulthood it didn't bother me that's part of why it doesn't bother me now it doesn't bother me when my son plays it but then when it comes over core thing it's the, it's just that base foundation of what it was that had a negative emotion set to it that you kind of grow from whereas now i think there's a certain there was some point i don't i don't know where i don't know what it was but I feel that people have become very sensitive to things in a way where they'll take it really over the top of like, oh my gosh, now it's kind of like the opposite where the blood and gore is okay, but the over-sexualized is not. Was there a trigger for the over-sexualized is not? 
feeling now? For me? No, no. for just in general, from what you've seen in the last four or five years, I'd say. Yeah, I would say so. Because, uh, wow, this is like a really hot topic. Okay, so for the over-sexualized things, now, <laughs> now you have the generation, you have the Me Too generation, which isn't a bad movement. It, it's not things. A lot of women coming... Um, coming out they're telling their stories they even men are telling their stories about the whole me too movement right. but yes. then then sexuality and what is okay what isn't okay there is such a, a weird line that's going through it that you i sometimes don't even know how to navigate myself sometimes because i like games like the right. way and it doesn't bother me um like uh, but for for another woman who Oh boy, finding the right words for this is really, really, really hard. We need to find the right words, people. Find the right words. Uh, but they aren't are these they games are, rated M? Yeah, but I've M. seen individuals walk into a particular, you know, game store, or whatever, and say, "Mom, I want this," and and the kid looks like twelve, whatever, and they're still getting the Call of Duties and all the games that are. I don't know if Call of Duties rated M. I didn't fact check that, but those games that I wouldn't necessarily, as a parent, buy my child you know those games i see parents do it all the time so i don't think the rating is really a thing for some parents because you know they johnny just buy it anyways you know author wants it author gets what he wants um, period okay so the best way to navigate this is that there is a very very touchy subject when it comes to putting out what's out there and that there are women and they have the right, they have every right to it. And I believe what, where their stance is, is that video games shouldn't be portraying that because it gives a stigma that it's okay to look at women in that way. And I understand right. that. But I also feel that, hey, Otaku man. What's up, I also feel that, and I do this with my son, it was something I had to heavily consider when he was coming around that age of do I allow him to play games that are like that are alive? Um, and how do I train that? I think a lot of that has to be on how we're raising our kids to see right. this and having okay, that can conversation. That? Okay. Can, can you hold that for one second? How we're raising our kids. Don't don't let that one go. Uh, but that's uneducated parents. Is it uneducated parents or entitled kids? Right? Well, go ahead, Daniela. But it, it it's having to explain that because as a son, I like I have to explain to him like you do realize that this isn't how you should see all women. That you should still respect women. You should still respect men, no matter how right. it is portrayed in a video game. That is not how the real world um, functions. It's just a game which is a very different approach that I have to take from him looking at what is out there in, in our entertainment when it comes to movies or magazines. Right. It's a whole different approach. But when it comes to a, a video game where I feel like a lot of men and women come from, but it's very terrible to have a video game over-sexualized, that is a conversation that I think as a parent or aunt or an uncle or a sibling, whatever it may be, that you have to start that conversation with the child that's playing it or the teenager. It really shouldn't be a child playing it, but if it's a of age teenager, then that's a good, it's, I think it's actually a great way to start that conversation to open up, you know what it is, because if you are buying it, if you're a parent and you are buying dead right. or alive or any of for... those types of games for your kid, right. You should also be able to be prepared to have this conversation with them. If you're you not, should. you shouldn't be buying it for them. Culture thing? How so? How, how is it cultural thing? I, I think that uh, even now, uh, certain movies, uh, my wife and I, we are very careful on how we navigate certain movies with, with my daughter. So I don't know if it's a culture thing. It depends, right? Because like you said, the ratings are in the boxes, the rating, uh, you know, the ga the gaming industry has a rating. Those things, I totally understand what you guys are saying in chat. I totally understand what you're saying in chat. But I've seen it time and time again where a parent will walk in with, you know, Johnny. Uh, it's usually a Johnny, okay? Not, not so far off in terms of the age, anywhere between 12 and 14, right? Getting games that are very violent. And if he doesn't get it, he cleans in the store, and because the mom 
and sometimes the dad doesn't want to hear them complain, they get the game, right? And that's how it goes. And it starts from there and the cycle continues, right? So I don't know if it's necessarily a cultural thing because if you've primed, you know, the child that it's okay, every time they complain, they're going to get what they want anyway, then how is that a cultural thing? As a parenting, is it a parenting? Thing? It's a parenting thing, right? That's what that's that's where I'm going with that. It's definitely a parenting thing, and 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 the Dead or Alive, you know, series has always you know different uh, feelings and emotions to individuals. Uh, nudity and sexual nature is not looked at in the same way in the U.S. That I understand that, I understand that, but in terms, of, I guess, the context of the conversation, Daniel, I think I was more focusing on uh, the U.S. aspect of it, right? Even the last game that came out for Dead or Alive. One of the last games, not um, last round, but um, the Dead or Alive Extreme Volleyball. I think that's three that's out, right? So you'd have to import that to localize it to yourself, right? From like Euro, Euro Asia website or something like that, right? Or something like that, right? Uh, but it never actually came to the PlayStation Store for us US, right? Um, but the game is there. Like if you wanted the game, get the game. Well, you're of age to get the game and you understand uh, the the nuances of conversation that's taking place with that. And you're sensitive to that when you're playing the game. I know individuals, as soon as they see me play Dead or Alive, they don't even want to stay in the room because they don't like how the women are portrayed in the game when they see it. Depending on the outfit that they're wearing or the outfit that I pick at the time, they're not having it, <laughs> right? They're showing it. So as it relates to... Uh, Dead or Alive Extreme Beach Volleyball, same thing, right? So, yeah, the Japanese account to download them and stuff like that. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So, um, I mean, I, I dig those games. I've always dug those games. Um, I've, I've always said that Dead or Alive 2, 3, 4, 5, whatever Dead or Alive is, is one of the best fighting games on the planet, right? And I think that would transition right into our next point before we get out of here. How does... Wait, before you, before you do that... Before I get there? Okay, I, 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 want, I wanted right, keep, to keep include going. something because in case anybody's listening and it, I o you only have to worry about what a, a boy thinks and how they treat women and how they see this game. The same conversation right. goes for if a girl is playing with it. You got to be able to have be comfortable having the conversation with them to just not think like this is what you need to emulate. Um, you can teach right. a girl from a young age and growing up to feel confident in her own skin and her own body without having to go Absolutely. that way. If she does, Absolutely. then she does. But that's like, you need to, there needs to be that, that foundation to know that it is just a game. This isn't real. And so that goes if you're, right. no matter what you're raising, boy, girl, whatever your child identifies that, to just uh, understand it's just a game. Right. So, so I just want to make sure I mentioned some of the things in the chat. You have to have a Japanese or uh, HK account to download them. I feel what you're saying, but I see the game for the gameplay. I think the gameplay in the game is absolutely amazing. I don't think there's um, a lot of fighting games that could really be as technical, as fluid as um, Dead Alive series period. Then you have Virtual Fighting, uh, Virtual Fighter 5. I think that was the last one. I don't know if there was a 6. I don't know. Um, I didn't fact check, so... Uh, forgive me, um, but uh, Virtual Fighter and games like that, so, so amazing, right? So how on earth, can we go to the last one, Daniela? Yeah, sure, we can totally this go is, to the this, last one. This is the very one. last one. So so having said all those things about Dead or Alive, depending on how you feel about it, right? Uh, we'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, definitely hit us up. Um, how on earth do we get a farming simulator for esports and we don't have that? for a game like Dead or Alive. How does that happen? I don't know. How does that happen? Um, I don't know. Now, I mean, that, props that to the farming simulator thing, but how does Dead or Alive two, three, four, five last round not get any sports treatment for anything? The man dropped. I don't know. Yeah, that that's sad to me. I don't so that, I don't understand. That, that is just that is okay. So that is Evo is just one of many tournaments that are out there. Yes, it is right. the biggest one. But how is there less of a demand for Dead of Alive and there's more of a demand it. for Farming Simulator? 
who is going into season two. I didn't even know that there was a season one. I had no idea. I had no idea. How but does that happen? There is an esports league for farming simulator. Like, I I can't process that. I still need to go and find out what these tournaments are like because I guess apparently some of them are three v three. Farming. Listen, they get they get down. They get down. <laughs> they like, get are you down. having tractor races? Listen, um, they get down. Who can milk the cow I, the best? Not, I don't I'm know. I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad at it. I'm just irritated. I'm just irritated because there's so many dope games that we have that, I mean, Dead or Alive not get a treatment like that? That's almost shameful, right? So Dead or Alive 6 is right around the corner. Let's see. Let's see what happens. All right, so chat, what what we got? Um, the <laughs> thing with gaming these days, uh, what happened? Uh, Dead or okay. Alive was not evil a few years, demand dropped. The thing with gaming these days is the average age of gamers are in their 30s. We need to educate parents to know there are lots of games made for mature audiences. All right, so I don't want to attack the parents, but I do, right? I don't want to attack the parents, but I do in this way, right? If I take a game cake, all right, and I turn it around, there is something there, <laughs> right? That tells me a particular age group for that, right? So if we're if we're if now we have to okay, so let's let's go with what you're saying right now. If if now we have to go educate the parents to turn the case around, where if I'm not mistaken, on the same uh, movie cases, right? There's a, there's a rating in the back of the movie cases, right? Yeah. Like Blu-ray cases and stuff like that, because I don't do Blu-rays like that anymore. I mean, because you know we watch everything digital now. I guess most of you guys in chat will probably do the same thing. So now I have to, so you're saying now I have to physically, you know, or even on a show like this, tell the parent, you know what, it's a great idea for you to turn the case around for you to see the rating on the back of the case. That's what we're doing, Taco? Is that, I don't know. Shouldn't that be automatic at this point, Daniela? I mean, I, maybe it's me. I, unless that gender, I, I, okay, I think we're in an age where there, there are age, like gamers are now our age and they have their own set of kids. Like we collectively as parent gamers here should know those things. Right. We grew up into those things. I don't know where the parents are that are coming in. I don't know. Like, even if you're not a gamer, you had friends who do you have games who played there's no i i have a hard time believing that people in our generation didn't have a friend or multiple friends who played video right. games and wasn't exposed to it in some sense to be able to not know that there is a rating on there for and if there's like that there's a I'm going to use example because this happened to me recently. If there is a woman out there who knows how to find out all the information of a person that she literally just met in within less than an hour because he, she scoured the social media. Google. She should know that there's zero ESRB ratings on, you know, video games. Right. Not I, I'm not, forgiven. I'm not. I'm not letting the parents off the hook, but for the parents who really don't know, I feel for them, right? And if we have to do a better job to say, hey, this game is dope and this game is for mature audiences, even when we're streaming and stuff like that, that's great. I don't mind doing that. But I think that most parents are in a particular position. And I think most is unfair to say, because I'm all even, you know, correct and, and hit myself over the head as I'm making this point. There, there's a percentage of parents out there that are frustrated with their child because they get everything right going back to what i was saying before and it's like this is the next thing what what call of duty black ops 4 just came out right what's the next major thing division 2 is right around the corner what's the other thing dead or alive 6 is right around the corner right and all the destiny stuff that's happening right now the updates between now and august 
that's you know destiny is not that bloody or anything like that but it's an active shooter right the conversations that take place on the party chat get a little crazy the game chats can get a little crazy but those two to 12 to 14 right groups are still actively playing those games right it, it, it's it's the reality that we're that we we have right now and possibly one of the strictest parents that i i know because i no. i do not like the excuse i really do not like the excuse that parents have like oh it is too much for me to to pay attention to to me that saying is saying. your child's not worth you investing your time into and I will be that person. You can totally at me. Because with, with my son, I know what my son's doing all the time. And my son might not like it, but he knows why I do it. And we have very open conversations. Like, if you don't know what your son is doing on uh, or your child, I keep saying son because that's what I, I have. But if you don't know what your child's doing on their phone, right. there's like so many apps that are even built into the phone for you to be able to better track, to better monitor it. If you're a parent that doesn't like, oh, my my kid's always on the phone all night and stays up all night. Well, you know what? On the iPhone, right. on the iPhone, they have a thing in there. There's a setting in there for your screen time. So you can you can set up specific time blocks of like all apps pretty much cease functioning. Only the function that does work is making a phone call in between these hours or you can also set it up for how much time they spend on social media on video games and you just like oh they get an hour a day on this there's a right. lot of things and the same thing can go for for video games i mean i have a very ex exclusive rule that i carried on with me as a kid is that we don't shut we don't unnecessarily shut bedroom doors okay so well, yeah my son has his pc um, set up in there and he plays but his door is always open so and i can see straight from the doorway what is on his screen and who he's talking to okay and it doesn't take a whole lot to just take a quick peek and peek in there and just like see what he's playing or just like you know walk by just see what he's talking about they don't they might not like it but in the long run it is a lot easier and it's your kid isn't supposed to like what you do yeah yeah strict parents man strict parents and the, it's it's the what would you say is the anomaly now i think right it is because i think a lot of parents now. that are are my peers are way too easy on their kids and they give in way too easy it's like they don't they don't want to deal with the mess of hearing it and you know what's really funny and um my my son's friends somehow really love me and i can be just as strict with them if they're going to be under my household you adhere to my rules you're going to be talking to my son yeah i will be listening i will check up i will do whatever it is yo, yo what's up Aaron? <laughs> what's up with the raid aaron welcome welcome raiders <laughs> what's up taco and and even then like i have my son's instagram account tied to my account um, so I can see whatever's message and I tell his friends, I tell his friends, like whatever DMs that you send my son, I can see them. I, I'll, I won't try to be completely intrusive. I'll look at a couple of sentences here and there, but I won't jump into the conversation on my son's account and just like interrupt. I let right. them do it and they know they do it and they willingly do it and they willingly talk and they send the same means. They talk about girls. They do all this stuff knowing that I am there and I can see what they say. And they still don't mind it. They don't like, oh, your mom's crazy. Oh, I don't like this. Right. And a couple of them exactly. will openly say is, I wish my mom paid attention to me like you do. Listen, man, you gotta love parents like that. It's it's a good thing. Strict parents, you know, we have to do it. Hi, mom. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what it is. And they will. And I play games with them. And it, it's it's funny. It's like Thanks as much, host, as, much as, as teenagers don't, like it deep down they do want that attention they do right. they do need that reassurance that what they do matters whether it be a positive thing or a negative thing they need to know that they have some type of worth and there i feel there are too many that i Absolutely. know personally that are my peers that are way too easy on their kids and just like yeah here 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 go 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 leave me alone 
I can't do that. Right. So, so for, for the parents in here, right. For the individuals who just joined the Raiders real space, what's up, you know, all the parents, you know, Taku man, what's up. Um, so, so the whole thing is, um, you know, strict parenting is tough. It is the anomaly as we were before, but at the same time as needed, because I'm not going to, uh, go to the store. I mean, my daughter, she's 16. And there are certain movies that she just can't, she just can't watch. Period. Right. And you have to be okay with that. And you have to take a stance with that. And I think, you know, uh, for the parents who are struggling with that, whether it's a single parent home and, and I have to be sensitive to all this stuff, right. I have to be sensitive to that stuff. Right. Uh, but, but for the, the parents who are, who are not taking the time to turn around the box to see exactly what the rating is. Hey, I can't, that's, that's not an excuse. Right. In terms of, you know, what the game rating is, which is what we're talking about before you guys came in here, um, whether it's a game like a dead or alive or a call of duty or stuff like that is a, uh, why is Johnny who's 12 playing those games? I don't know. Should he be playing those games? I don't know. Here's the other uh, thing. Should he if, be... Go ahead. If you have time to find out and you're one of those parents who are like, Oh, this has gluten. Oh, this is this. You can turn around a box and find the ESV. <laughs> yeah, you, okay? you can definitely, okay? you definitely can. turn around a box. <laughs> I don't have time to find that? out what has gluten, okay? That I'm that up opposite parent. You know what? If my kid is fed right. and you know it's not overly processed food, it's fine. It's fine. That's right. Game <laughs> ratings, Aaron. Game ratings, man. You gotta know what it is. Uh, any other comments? So so that was a good one. We threw that in at the last at the last second before we came on, Daniela. That was dope. I that was dope. <laughs> What's up, Tri? DOA number one. What up? <laughs> DOA number one. Um, March says, 1st. Aaron says, I had to beg to get GTA, had a slideshow and everything. Dude, you guys still have that slideshow? I would love to see that. <laughs> Word. No, I mean, so, so yeah, no, go ahead. No, no, I didn't. I didn't. Go ahead. You. DOA type. No, no, just thinking like, you know, as we wrap up, you know, thank you guys for, for joining. Thank you for hanging out. Uh, and uh, we're, we're trying a couple of new things as it relates to uh, the show, a Real Space. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. If you guys want to follow, this is where we're going we're gonna to record uh, the actual show, uh, the show radio. This is episode 484. So if you're tuning in for the first time, we've been uh, recording uh, the podcast for about 10 years. This is the 10th year uh, of the podcast itself. And, um, yeah, we're excited. We're excited for the things to come. And and I know that there's some review stuff that we're, we're thinking about and preparing for you guys to uh, hang out and uh, check out as we talk about those things. So um, uh, that's all I got. That's all I got. And, and the, uh, the intro is going to be short, as, as I mentioned to Daniela uh, a couple of weeks ago, where we're trying to make everything uh, as uh, very tight knit as possible as it relates to even the, uh, the outro. So uh, all of you guys who joined in the chat, uh, thank you so much. Uh, we would love for you to hang out with us and meet the world if you do follow. And uh, Daniela, that's all I got. Yeah, that's it. 484. 484. So if we're not here, uh, Daniela, where are you on Twitch? Um, Twitch.tv forward slash Miss DJM, M I S S D J M. Word. And if I'm not here, I'm at Uriah, which is U R I Y Y A. And guys, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for joining us. And we will see you next time. Take care. Laters.